Even the best cops may not know when they're in the presence of a person who kills without remorse. Too often, a cold-blooded killer is revealed only after lives have been taken. Tampa Bay, Florida. A mother cries. Her child has been killed, beginning one of the worst nightmares in the history of Florida law enforcement. Officers apprehend a man leaving the scene. He identifies himself as the dead boy's father. He's the only suspect in the death of the innocent child. This is where most cases end. But for everyone involved, this is just the beginning. The distraught father's name comes back clean. He swears his son's death was an accident. Police aren't sure what to believe. So we're trying to figure out, you know, what's, what's going on with the father, if this is an accidental shooting. Two seasoned detectives bring the suspect back to the scene of the shooting. The man tries to explain how this awful mistake happened. I guess the butt stock hit the side of the wall and it went off. Meanwhile, the crime scene technicians find three assault rifles, including the one that fired the deadly round. The cops lead the handcuffed father back to the car. They carry the possible murder weapon. Before they go, the detectives show the rifle to a uniformed corporal. It's the last time anyone will ever see these two officers alive. No one knows is that the man is actually Hank Earl Carr. He's not the dead boy's father, he's the stepfather. He's also a violent ex-con who is accustomed to clashes with the law. So accustomed, he carries a hidden handcuff key with him at all times. Only minutes after this tape is shot, Hank Carr uses that key to escape from his cuffs. He then steals one of the officer's guns and kills them both in cold blood. Armed and on the run, the man then shoots and kills a rookie state trooper. News of the massacre spreads quickly. The corporal's hand signals tell the whole painful story. Three officers dead. Shot. Three. The officers have to choke back their grief and find the man who killed their comrades. On the highway, police speak to an eyewitness. They learn Carr was shot and injured during his flight from the law. Bleeding and desperate, Carr is pulled into a gas station, taking a female clerk hostage. He is now trapped in this shell station. The police response is massive. They are taking no chances with this rampaging killer. Just does and does the police cars for this individual that possibly is involved in shooting three officers. Despite their emotion, the police play this by the book. But inside, the gunman does the unexpected. I didn't know what to do. I was scared. I panicked. I flipped out. He calls a talk radio station. They started calling me a liar, this and that. With hundreds of officers poised for a siege and a scared clerk cowering at gunpoint, Hank Carr decides he wants to talk. I felt his pulse again, it was gone. I knew at that time my son was dead. All this was an accident. It's a startling look inside this killer's mind. He tries to justify his actions, painting himself as a victim. But his callousness shows through. I got one of the handcuffs off. I reached up front and uh, got the pistol away from the officer that was driving. I shot them both. I know I'll fry for the cops. I don't want to cry in the electric chair. I don't want to go to prison. I don't want to have to eat the food. I don't want to have to live with people. There is no remorse for the dead policeman, only concern for himself. I don't want to go to prison. I don't want to go. The radio host tries to be the voice of reason. You know, I, the best advice I can give you would be to let that, that lady who has nothing to do with any of this out of that store. Amazingly, his words get through. Just before sundown, the emotionally shattered woman is released. Police rush to her aid. Surrounded by SWAT officers, she's escorted to safety. She's running back this way now. The hostage is safe. Quickly, the tactical team puts on gas masks and prepares to go in. They're in position. The signal is given. Literally, I could feel the vibration of my chest. Two concussion grenades rip through the rear of the store. The blast is designed to distract the gunman. The shockwave can be felt by everyone. In the chaos and smoke, the precision SWAT team storms the gas station. You can see the SWAT teams have ran inside. 
The officers are prepared for a brutal shootout with a confirmed killer. Instead, they find Hank Carr, dead of a self-inflicted gunshot wound. Rather than face the consequences of taking four innocent lives, Carr took his own life. This deadly day finally comes to a close. But there are no happy endings to this story. There is only grief for the family and friends of the slain officers who died so cruelly. Only pain and regret for the mother and birth father of a child whose life ended too suddenly and too soon. And for officers, there is nothing they can do but mourn their fallen brothers, each of them knowing it could have been them. But police will never back down from the Hank cars of the world. They've taken an oath. They have a job to do and a duty to fulfill.